We're given f of a is equal to f of b, and they're both zero. f of x is continuous on the closed interval. Then we want to see which of the following is true. Part a says f of x must be identically zero. That means that if I were to draw this function from a to b, f of x has to be zero throughout this interval. And this is not exactly correct because we can have a situation where it can go up and then down and it will not be identically zero. Similarly, it could also go down if you want and then back up. So it doesn't have to be identically zero. There are many ways it cannot be. So the word must means there's only one condition where it has to be zero and we know that's wrong. Part B, f of x may be different from zero for all x. Yeah, this is what we just talked about in part A. It doesn't have to be zero throughout the interval. It could be like a upside down parabola. You know, it could be like a, a absolute value. There could be many different functions where the endpoints are the same. So this is correct. Part C, there exists at least one number C in the interval from A to B such that f prime of c is zero. This is basically talking about the mean value theorem. We know that the condition for the mean value theorem is f has to be continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. We're given the condition that f of x is continuous on the closed interval, but there's no mention that f is differentiable in the open interval. So we cannot guarantee or we cannot use the mean value theorem. So we C is false. Finally, f prime of x must exist for every x on A to B. So that means here that f is differentiable on the open interval. And again, the key here the key word here is must. Well, what if we have something like this? What if this is a absolute value and here you get a corner? We know that f of a is equal to f of b equals zero, and it is continuous on the closed interval, but it's definitely not differentiable. So this is an example where it wouldn't work. So b is the answer.